processing without any good tools for TCP dump or Wireshark. It's just a no-go. So I think Steve has uh, some good thoughts about that. Thank you. Um, this talks about packet capture, and it's about a tool that I've done to enhance the packet capture. Uh, packet capture came up first, and the first DBDK user sub, the most demanded thing for DBDK was, can we do TCP dump? And since then, we've done a few things, and it's gotten better. So the current tool is built on libpcap. Does anybody know who didn't cheat and look ahead? How long? How old libpcap is? It's 35 years old. It's older than my puppy. That was a sniffer joke. Um, and it was built to be better than the network interface tool that was in SunOS at the time. And it had filtering with BPF. In DBDK, we put in RTP dump in 1611. Um, and what I was looking at was, can we do this better? And so I went looking around first to see other projects that were doing similar things with DVDK. So PDump is in the standard DVDK. There's a tool called DVDK Cap. Somebody has added DVDK support to libpcap. And I haven't finalized on a name, but I'm just going to call it T DVDK PCAP NG for now for what I've done. So the original RT PDump. Um, where it uses a secondary process model and generates PCAP files. Uh, DVDA CAP was done as a standalone program running as a primary mode that generates PCAP file. And inside libpcap, if you turn out a bunch of options in the current version, you can build a DVK version that works as a primary process. So what I wanted to do was take the best parts of PDump being a secondary process and the best parts of later code, which uses pcapng and build something. So that was the goal. Um, libpcap, I said it's 35 years old. There's been 141 CVEs in libpcap. Um, most of those deal with trying to parse network packets in C is hard. You can get arbitrary links. You can get arbitrary levels of nesting. So the read side of libpcap is where all the CVEs are. Um, the native support in libpcap is very limited. And the pcap file format has a bunch of limitations, like the timestamp by default is in microseconds, which doesn't work very well on modern networks. And there's no real net metadata. And you can only dump for a single interface. There are some hacks to do faster timestamps, but I'm not going to go too far with that. pcapmg was done by the folks doing Wireshark. They wrote up a standard for it, which is how I wrote the code from scratch. Um, there's support on the read side of that in TCP dump already. And the packet format basically has multiple sections. The first section is a section header that says what this PCAP file is, and then interfaces, and then um, packets on that interface. And you can also put in statistics and uh, name resolution. So, you know, if you got a file from somewhere, you could actually have the host name to IP mapping in the file. So this is how PDump works today. There's the primary process librt PDump inserts callbacks into the packet processing path on receive and transmit and takes those packets, copies them, puts them in a ring buffer, and then the secondary process picks up the copy of those packets and calls the PCAP PMD to generate the PCAP file. So the, the couple of things here. First of all, having the PCAP PMD is a useful way of doing it, but it's kind of like indirectly using a library when it doesn't need to. And this PCAP PMD shows up in the list of ports, so you're kind of intrusive. and you have all the limitations of PCAP. So what I did for the next gen version was um, use the existing 
APIs for callback, so just use pdump as it is in the primary process. And in the secondary process, plug in a new PCAP ng writer library, and I can take enhancements from there. So as an API point of view, I said, let's make this look like a standard Linux tool, not like a DBDK app. So there's none of these EAL flags, um, I'm port masks, whatever. These are the same flags that I'm adding one by one that exist on the dump cap program for Wireshark. So you can say dash D and it prints, capital D, it prints a list of interfaces. It can take multiple interfaces on the command line. So you can say I1, I2, which will capture for port 1 and 2 at the same time. Um, the output file is a W flag. Um, some of these aren't implemented yet, like I haven't done the fallback to PCAP. And I tried to make the display the user sees actually look like dump cap. So what happens is if you do dash D, if you look with dump cap, you'll get a list of E0 and this address. So with dash D on DVD8 PCAP NG, it says 0, port 0, and this is the PCI address. All these examples, by the way, I was running on vert.io on my laptop, so nothing particularly wild. Um, the second example here, I'm capturing, I said on my laptop in the VM capture, it got six packets. And notice that I didn't have to give it all the command line arguments because it defaults to the same way dump cap does, finds the first interface, listens on that one, and the name of the file, if you don't give it a name, it generates a name just like dump cap does based on the time and the PCI address name of the um, file. So this was on my VM, so I got a bunch of spanning tree packets. Not particularly interesting, but shows that it works. You can also do things like, you can say pcap ng dash something and dash w and a dash, and it'll output the standard out. You can pipe it into T-Shark, so you can um, go back and forth. This also shows that I was being lazy because T-Shark doesn't, when it's reading a file, doesn't need to run its root. That's actually an important part because y you're better off capturing the things on one environment where you have high privilege and decoding them on another environment where you're sandboxed and you have low privilege. Because that way, if somebody sent you a malicious packet that had six levels of VXLAN embedded in got a stack overflow, you're doing it not as root, you're doing it somewhere else. So what's inside a PCAP ng file? There's a section header which says what OS you ran it on, what hardware you ran it on, what application. So for this program, the OS just uses the Linux uname to find out what OS you're on. The hardware, I just put the DVDK version, and the application is this one. For the interfaces, the interface block, so for every interface you're capturing on at the start, you have to put a block in saying interface 0 is this, interface 1 is this, and it has the speed and the name and the description. We use the dvdk info commands to get that info to put it into the file. And the packet data has a nanosecond timestamp, which interface it came in on, um, what flags are are related to that, which is basically which direction. And you can also have information about how big the cap packet was. One thing here is that um, with the back to the user interface, you can say dash i star, which will get all the DVDK ports that are running. Um, if you do that and you look at the file that you get out of PCAP NG, there's this standard program in Wireshark called Caps Info, which you can dump the header of your file. So I dump my temp file, and it says this is an Ethernet file, the data rates, all this. And it was done on DVDK 1911 RC0 operating system in this program. Um, I'm not hard, these aren't hard coded choices. It was just um, the other thing you can do which I haven't implemented in any detail, is you can actually add comments to it. So you can add a comment saying, I got this capture on this system or some other. Um, 
So once I did the first version, uh, there's some things I wanted to add to PDump. The first one was timestamp. Right now, the existing PDump application timestamps it when it sees the packet at the other end of the ring. I'd love to do it in the hardware, but we don't have consistent hardware timestamps in DBDK. So in this application for now, it puts a timestamp on when it puts packets in the ring. Um, the flag, there was no indication of which direction the flag was, the packet was coming from. So I just used a field in the MBOP metadata to indicate which direction or which the packet was coming. And those are two small things. Um, that I'll push upstream. And then there's a bunch more that I want to push upstream. First of all, every time you look at a new thing, you find a bunch of things that haven't been kept up to date. So the PDump code is about, hasn't been touched since it was first put in. So there's a bunch of cleanups. I want to support hot plugs so the actual interface doesn't have to be there when you start the capture program. The other one is um, the current model doesn't really support. I would like to run. Suppose you had two interfaces and you had wanted to run um, two instances of the, of the PCAP capture program, one to pick up one port and one to pick up a different port. That doesn't really support it. Um, one thing that would really help performance is if you go back to we're, cap we're copying every packet as we put it into the ring. I'd like to use the DVDK ref count on the MBUFFs, but as I've looked at drivers and applications, people don't use the ref count correctly. So if I give it a ref count of two, that means you as an application cannot write that MBUFF. You have to take a copy. Nobody's code seems to do that, so I'm not sure I can put that optimization in or it has to be optional. The, the other one is um, right now, the capture captures the whole packet all the time, always. I don't want to do that because you, as an optimization, you should only really need to look at the headers. So there's some ways we can set up the MBUF pool so we only get a fixed size at the start of the packet. And with DVDK, we already have flags in the MBUF that say how long the L2 and L3 length are. So we can add an option that says, I only want the headers of the packet. And this is important for privacy reasons. A lot of cloud operators or whatever will not let you cap get capture files with the data. They'll let you get capture files with the headers. Um, filtering is a bit of a problem. I'd really like to add filtering. But the PCAP guys use classic VPF. So I don't know if you're familiar with VPF. It's basically you build a virtual instruction set that says, I want to look at offset 30, and I want to look at, and it must match 5. And if it does, then I want to look here. And it goes down a list of rules to match a packet. EPVF is a different instruction set that's bigger. So you can, uh, the guys that did XTP um, PCAP basically wrote a Go program to take classic BPF uh, and t turn it into EBPF. And DVDK supports EBF, but I don't really think that's the right thing to do. I don't want to get a Go dependency. I don't want to be reinventing things. So I'd like to open a discussion on, should we put classic VPF in? Or um, The reason that this is really useful is libpcap, you can say, uh, you can give it a string that says match like STP packets, and it generates the PCAP the classic BPF program to match an SDP pack. So all that you know, high level to BPF stuff is in libpcap, but there's nothing to do extended BPF. Oops. So in summary, I'm trying to shorten this a little bit because we're running long. Um, I built a tool with a command line interface similar to trying to be like Wireshark. Um, the eventual goal is to have it in as the app in the DBDK for packet capture and deprecate the old PDump. Um, I tried to simplify the architecture by getting rid of the direct dependency on PCAP uh, and the PCAP PMD. And p by supporting PCAP NG, we can do multiple devices, faster timestamps, 
and you can put comments and metadata. So, for example, an option that could be done in the future is we can encode the offload flags that are in the received packet in the comment metadata of the thing. So you could say, oh, that packet that always causes the problem has the TSO bit set. Uh, and you could see that. So, so I'm s almost standing between you and lunch, so <laughs> there is time for questions. So. No questions? Uh, Steve, so I, I, maybe this is a naive question, so forgive me. Um, but if I'm running the capture on a port, there can't be another application running on that port, right? That's right. a complete capture. So for, would there be any way, or can you think of an easy way in which I'd be able to put this in line between a port and a DPDK application? Because you know, that's where something like this would be really, really, well, really That's useful. why I chose the secondary model versus the other ones that were primary. Okay. So the only thing you ask the primary program to do is call the init function for pdump, okay. um, which sets up the ring and says, okay, I'm ready for business. Well, um, you're dependent then on the application vendor actually making that call. Right. It, okay. We could, we, could, we could cheat with LD preload or something, but... Um, I mean, that's how the original design was. Um, you could also, we could even get to the point of um, in the library automatically, in, you know, if the library was in the library path, the init function gets run. And okay, that's interesting. We should talk about that offline. Okay, thank you, um, Steve. The other one is that um, a lot of applications end up doing their own capture internally. Um, VPP does. I know some several proprietary applications have it. And that I don't want to preclude that they do that. And I'd also like to, since the BCAP NG Writer library is free BS, is BSD bit license based, and I wrote it from scratch, anybody else could suck it in and use it in their application as well. Thank you. Okay, just to say we are about 20 minutes late. Um, thank you. Uh, next talk.